In most Mario games, your goal is to platform through levels, grab the flagpole, and rescue Princess Peach. But, in 2022, a route was devised to do the unthinkable. Rescue Princess Peach without ever hitting the jump button. Tool Assisted or TAS speedrunning legend Adil performed this run, utilizing co-op modes various mechanics to beat each level without ever pressing the A button. But how was this done? Surely it's impossible, right? Well, sit back and relax as we break down how new Super Mario Bros. Wii was beaten without ever pressing the jump button. Before we get into everything, let's take a look at the shortest route through the game. 1-3 has a secret exit that leads to this cannon and takes you to World 5, skipping half of the game. The top part is taken as 5-3 is a lot more difficult to complete. The secret exit is described in the ghost house and the cannon is taken to World 8. 8-2 has another secret exit which is used to beat 8-7 and the rest of the game is completed as normal. This is the ideal route that the Tash should use to beat the game. But even though many levels weren't completed, it's still incredibly difficult. If you want to watch the unedited playthrough of each level, Adil's playlist is linked in the description. Make sure to subscribe to him, as well as to me for more content like this. You might be thinking, oh this challenge is impossible, you can't pass that Goomba without jumping, and that's where you're wrong. Normally the only way to get around it is to jump over it, but what if you go under it? When the music bars, you have a few frames where you could slide under the Goomba. I'm going to be referring to this technique as a bar slide throughout this entire video. The toads then run into the Goombas, and when one nears Mario's head, the bubbles pop and yellow toads jump on a Goomba's head, or as I call them, a bubble jump. These are the very first jump skips. Hope it's not too difficult for you yet. Sliding on the rolling hill allows you to easily kill the Goomba and move on to the underground sub area. In the cave, we are introduced to yet another new mechanic used throughout this level and the run, head bopping. Basically, in co-op mode, players can jump on the heads of others for a little bit of extra height. This is what is used to get out of the cave easily. Get used to seeing head bobs and bubble jumps a lot throughout this playthrough as most jumps can be solved using these techniques. You can use a set of head bobs to get across these two jumps and another head bob is done to get blue toad onto the bricks. What is needed now is to get Mario into a bubble by pressing the bubble button is banned from the run. Mario dies to a shell and uses an advanced bubble jump technique to get on top of the high set of blocks. Head bopping is then repeated which gets Mario on the middle platform between the two pipes. The rest of the level isn't as bad with few bubble jumps and head bobs to get Luigi to the end safely before Yellow Toad uses a bubble jump paired with head bobs to finish the level. That was the very first level of the game. It's not as bad as you thought, was it? At this point, we can farm infinite lives really easily and not have to worry about lives for the rest of the run. 1-2 introduces a more complicated version of the head bop, the extended head bop. It's the same principle, but just with multiple characters bouncing off of each other, which can be used for insane height. The extended and normal head bops get you pretty much entirely through the level, but there's another new mechanic that I have to touch bases with, ice bubbling. Ice balls or fireballs can be used to also pop bubbles, which would allow that bubbled character to get height without being on top of another character. The ice flower also has some weird physics, which allows for this to happen. I don't know why. The rest of this level is just mainly a bunch of bubble jumps and head bobs, so it's not too difficult. 1-3 starts with an extended head bob to get over this tiny pipe. There are a lot of other head bobs and bubble jumps to get over the small hills on the ground, but nothing major happens for most of the level. The second star coin is grabbed, and it allows you to skip this nightmare of a section. There's a secret exit in this level, but the only issue is that it requires an insane amount of height. How are you supposed to get all the way up there from all the way down here? Simple. You do a head bump with Yoshi and bounce from this piranha pod's head to get onto this platform. A bubble jump is then used to get Luigi onto the next highest platform, and another is used to get Mario into the hidden coin area. The next bit is a waiting game for Luigi and Toad's bubbles to come near to you so that you can perform an extended head bump to get to the secret area. <sighs> yeah, this is some real nerd I know. The rest of the level is pretty standard compared to what was just done. The World 1 cannon is just- Oh. Yeah, we have to get the normal exit. This threw a massive wrench in the plans. The initial goal was to clear World 1 Cannon and go to World 5 immediately. But with no way of getting height here, we can't access the cannon. We have to instead go to World 2's cannon, which requires a lot more levels. This immediately forces us to 1- Tower, the first major roadblock of the run. Vertical levels are some of the hardest sections without jumping. You have to use an advanced variation of an extended head bob to get past this first section. And this is what we're using throughout the entire level. To avoid doing extended head bobs, a ground pound is done to get a little extra height in some sections. This section to the left is impossible without jumping so we had to take the star coin route by doing bubble jumps and extended head bobs to reach the checkpoint. But then, there's this part with fast moving platforms. I'm just going to show you the clip. I can't even explain what happened here, like what the hell man. The rest of this level is just as difficult, but the Larry boss fight is easily cheesable by using extended head bobs. Still requires intense concentration though, as do most of the levels with this rule set. Besides the tower, how do you think a water level would be completed without jumping? But before that, we have to do two bar slides to even access the pipe to begin with. This level requires a lot of bubble jumps to cross death zones, but by utilizing the ice flower, Luigi can create platforms of frozen flesh to land safely on. This is what is mainly used throughout this level. The ice floats to the ceiling, so you're always moving downwards. The rest of the level is pretty much done with the ice platforming technique, as well as with a few bubble jumps here and there. The fork in the road gives us access to a massive death zone level and a rolling hill level. Which one do you think was taken in the route? 
the rolling hill level. Both of those levels are easily completable with double jumps and head bobs, but you also have to go under a few of the jumping paratroopers. All the enemies on the rolling hills can be easily killed by a slide, and the last jump just requires an extended head bob. One Nash Castle is rough. This level requires you to use the slopes of the gears to get into a head bob quickly. Just like One Dash Tower, ground pounds are used for height, but I want to show you this clip from this level. If this doesn't make you feel awful at video games, I don't know what will. The thwop section is the only section worth talking about, as you have time to get an extended head bob to progress. But other than that, this level uses janky slope physics to get through. So let's move on to World 2. We take the path to the right to 2-2. 2-2 is pretty straightforward, except for the Koopa Elevator, which has a very interesting strategy to overcome. By putting a Koopa in a shell, other Koopas won't push past it for some reason, which allows you to block off the left side and focus solely on the right. Another mechanic abused throughout this level is the way that Spike throws the spiked balls. If you stand next to them, you won't be hit, as the ball's thrown over you, and that is abused in this vertical section. But other than that, you can easily complete it and move on with your day. A quick note, a game of power-up paddles is completed here to get a power-up for 2-3. Speaking of which, you can't bar slide on the spiny, so you have to damage boost through it with all four characters to access the level. To get past this pipe, Mario needs to bounce on top of Luigi. Since Luigi's hitbox is bigger than Mario's, it allows Mario to barely get enough height to get on top of the pipe. There are a few more bubble jumps and head bobs to get through the level until this part with these fire things. They have to be baited onto the higher platforms to keep two characters in a head bob, and the checkpoint can be grabbed by using an extended head bob. The rest of the level is mainly just a dash with a few bubble jumps and head bobs throughout, so it's not too bad. In 2 dash tower, the chain link fences help a ton, make the level a lot more bearable. By getting a character to the highest point of a chain link fence, you can pop a bubble to get a character either to the next fence or to the high platform. This is called a chain bubble. But then we face an issue with moving fences. You can't stay on them forever, but by ground pounding and immediately cancelling, you can soar yourself mid-air almost indefinitely, which can be used to get you to the door. Roy requires a bit of thought as he can stun you, but by using head bobs, he's easily defeatable. Adil initially thought that this next level was impossible without the mini mushroom, but he found a way without it. 2-4 is irritating because of the wind, but extended head bobs get you through a lot of the level. The wind can be used to get distance, which helps a ton. Almost every sub area is used in this level to avoid as much of the upper paths as they're insanely difficult. The last section requires a lot of bubble jumps, but it's nothing too special in the context of the run. We are forced to find a way to beat 2-6 to access the cannon to World 5. This level isn't too complicated as you can do some slides on the rotating block to kill enemies, and you don't have to jump until this platform where a bubble jump is needed. The secret exit is insanely difficult to get, as all four characters need to be big, and you need to use ground pound cancels for momentum and extended head bobs to get up to the pipe in the sky. Thankfully, after this part, you can use some more bubble jumps to get the flag. This time, the cannon isn't impossible, but you do have to use some advanced variants of the foul strategies to get all four characters into the cannon. 5-1 is a test to see if you've mastered bubble jumps, as they are needed a lot throughout this level. A star is grabbed from the item box to make the next section a lot easier to complete, as most of the jumps are skipped. To avoid the two E's, you have to be a lot quicker with your bubble jumps and head bobs to avoid dying immediately, as invincibility frames are manipulated for the section. The vines allow for bubbles to be popped farther away, but you can't actually utilize the momentum from them, which is unfortunate. For the wheel section, there's just a bunch of head bobs that are used to move the wheel, but the rest of the level is quite simple. 5-2 is really easy. You may need to use weird slope physics and head bobs to traverse the poisonous caverns, but other than that, there's really not much else here besides the usual strategies that are done. But 5 Dash Tower was a nightmare. This is the only level throughout the run that is impossible without the mini mushroom. But now, we have to cover an advanced technique used here, ground pound rebounds or GPRs. For some reason, when two characters ground pound midair in the same place, it launches them upwards. This is abused throughout the entire level and allows you to pretty much infinitely fly upwards. A deal banned the mini mushroom in the other levels, but made an exception in this level because it's impossible with Without it, as of recording this video. GPRs aren't used much outside of this level, as they're only really broken when mini mushrooms aren't banned. The Iggy Boss is just like the other Kooplings, just use a head bob to kill him. Unlike the tower, 5-4 is easily completable by using either flower. Only thing to do here is to use the tiny goobers for a little bit of height, such that you can do a head bob into the pipe. The ghost house is also really simple, but we have to take a secret exit here to access the cannon to world 8. There are only a few extended head bobs to get to the hidden door, but most of the level is extremely easy. The only thing to do is a GPR by these stairs to get Luigi on to them. The cannon conveniently has dumps to GPR and extended head bob to get all four characters into the cannon safely. 8-1 requires you to move fast, and Adil died 47 times on the successful attempt. There are immediately some extended head bombs, and you have to move quickly on those sinking platform things, and sometimes even have to balance on them whilst waiting for the other characters to respawn. Invincibility frames are abused to get through the geysers. Other than that, bubble jumps and head bobs are everywhere, and the store behind you doesn't help at all. We grab the second pipe with a head bob, as there's not enough time to get into the first one. The rest of the level is just more balancing, and then we can move on with our day. 8-2 has a secret exit that we need to take to access 8-7. Most of this level are on rolling slopes, so we can easily take advantage of head bobs to progress. Every spike ball in this level is mainly dealt with through invincibility frames, as well as with extended head bobs. The 
secret exit path is really simple. We have to slide down the hills to kill the Goombas that come at you, but it isn't too difficult. 8-7 is the Bone Coaster level, and requires lots of jumps in normal playthrough. For the first downhill section, Adil uses a Fire Flower to take invincibility frames to get to the next downhill. He kills the three players and then takes advantage of them. I don't even know how this is possible. But the, the second Bone Coaster is manipulated through a combination of standing on the edge of, of the tail, invincibility frames, and ground pound cancelling. And this isn't even the hard part yet. The third ride uses similar strategies to the second ride by standing on the edge of its tail and invincibility frames to make it to the safe platform before the fourth ride. The fourth ride is the hardest part about this level. You have to have a Fire Flower to damage boost through the geysers that hit the two intercepting rides, followed by a damage boosted head bob to clear the level. 8 Airship is just a lot of bubble jumping and head bobbing and crossover gaps. Adil tried not to use the screws as an additional challenge, but there were a few that were impossible to skip. Most of this level is extremely simple, just you're on a timer for some of the unavoidable screw sections. The boss against Bowser Jr. is actually really unique, as you have to use bubble jumps to be able to ground pound the spike ball into his cloud car. But now, we have the final level. We have overcome trial after trial, but we stand here at the gates to Bowser's castle. Here we go. Most of this level is easily doable by using bubble jumps and extended head bobs. In the sections with the falling road platforms, you're on a timer to make sure that your run doesn't end, but it's just more extended head bobs, which have been covered numerous times throughout the run. Ground pound cancels are also used meticulously here to avoid awful characters dying to the lava, which allows us to get to Bowser. This level is done, let's move on. Oh, there's still more. This chase sequence requires you to move quickly while dodging Bowser's fireballs, but most of the first section is really simple. Just head bop and bubble jump to the areas that he breaks. And the second phase is also not that bad. So just a few more head bobs and bubble jumps to kill off Bowser for good. And that's it. That was New Super Mario Bros. Wii without jumping. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Adil for performing this run. He did an amazing job with everything he did to make this run possible. Make sure to subscribe to him and to me for more content like this. And I have a Discord. It's in the description below.